A film from Handy Sam. We're at an agency for an interview. A tall young man steps into a room painted entirely in white. He greets a woman in a wheelchair, dressed in white and sitting at Hi. a table. I'm applying for a job here. The ceiling height's 1.6 meters. Well, you don't have your own chair, so you can take the stool from over there. The young man sits down on a white stool in front of a table. Yes, it is the job of post clerk that we're recruiting for. Uh-huh. And do you think you can cope with this as efficiently as the rest of us? Yeah, I think so. Of course, you won't get the same pay. You do understand that you will get lower pay than the rest of us. Yeah, uh, I guess. Well, fine then. Now we're in the lobby. Have we received that J3 form yet? No, we'll get it next year. Typical when you work at this place. Everyone there's using a wheelchair. The postal clerk comes in with a trolley. He stoops over to avoid hitting his head on the ceiling. He goes into a room to deliver something. The manager and a colleague watch him come out and hit his head on the doorframe. We really have to get him some kind of aid. The postal clerk gets up, and in the next scene, also in the lobby, he's wearing a cycle helmet. He hits his head on the ceiling beam. Hi, Lena. As he passes Hi. the manager and colleague. Now that's a lot better. This is everyday life as experienced by more than a million people with disabilities in Sweden. Increase accessibility now. We're now going to meet four people who will be telling us about their experiences of applying for work and their disabilities. My name is Turbjörn and I have reading and writing difficulties. If you have a hidden disability like this, one always faces the question when applying for a job, whether I should say that I'm a person with dyslexia or whether I should just Keep quiet about it. Hey, I had the Kai. Hi, my name is Kai, and I have a mental disability, which is an invisible disability. If I, as a private individual, a former mental patient, call somewhere and say that I want to apply for a job, and the next question is, what have you done previously? I have been mentally ill. I wouldn't recommend that anybody does that. Hello, my name is Anne and I have serious visual impairment. I worked as a political expert for the former government and lost my job following the election in 2006. And then I had to register at the employment office as a job seeker. And uh, the first thing they told me was that they wanted to register me as a disabled worker. My name is Inga Lill and I am allergic to many things. I'm also the chairman of the Swedish Asthma and Allergy Association. I believe it's very important that authorities and others believe you when you tell them. You say it because it's actually true, not because you think it's fun. And it's very important to be believed. This is my experience both as a parent and also as a person with allergies myself. To be believed. A film from Handy Sam. We see seven people entering a conference room, six dressed in white. Everything inside is white. Walls, table, chairs, white notepads, cups and thermos. The seventh person is different, wearing a dark skirt and jacket. They all sit down at the table, switch off their mobiles, pour the coffee and get ready. One man knocks on the table to get attention and starts to sign, discussing the hearing department's budget. The only one who isn't signing is the woman in dark clothes. She looks around from one to the other, confused, scratches her head, but tries to keep up without saying anything herself. A new discussion starts. What should we have for lunch today? The woman starts to follow that discussion instead. They're discussing what restaurant they should eat at. The first discussion about the budget continues, but the woman's following the wrong discussion. The man next to her taps her yeah. on the shoulder. Can we make a decision? Uh, I thought that uh, y you want to have a decision, but I thought we made a decision here. No. Yes. What discussion really relates to the matter at hand? This is everyday life as experienced by more than a million people with disabilities in Sweden. Increase accessibility now. We're going to be meeting four people who tell us how important it is to be able to feel that they can participate despite their handicaps.
When I attend and think that I said the last time I was there that the loop must work, then you think that now they would have fixed it. When a meeting is important to me and I've looked forward to it, it's a tremendous disappointment when I find out that I can't participate in the meeting. My friends on the school playground when I was little, they would say to me, hey you, you damn freak, but I would think that I was just as good as they were. Then came those steps that I couldn't get up and all the others ran up the steps. Then I thought, well, I'm not really like the others. I'm actually different. Maybe they're right. Perhaps I am a damn freak. If the acoustics are bad, then perhaps you can hear just a little. You only hear bits and pieces here and there. To try and puzzle all these pieces together requires a lot of energy. And in the end you get very tired. At certain places I want to be like a normal person such as, for example, when I'm in a bowling alley. When I'm bowling, playing matches, then I want to be an ordinary bowler. Then I don't want them to ask me or take my disability into account, because there is no handicap there. When you're bowling, then it's just bowling. That is important. That's different. It's so simple in these diversity plans, equal opportunity plans. There are heaps of pretty words about us all being full worthy citizens and with rights and the likes and then when you actually enter reality you just encounter a little threshold which means that I can't function normally. Often in the world of education you aren't understood and that's tragic when you look at all the young people today who don't get the support they need. You have to harp on and whine to get help and then you just give up and just withdraw into yourself instead. That's the worst thing nowadays, that attitudes haven't changed.